always right, but he is always right. He's Andrew Wilkow. You know, my only regret here is that this break, the 40, the top of the hour, I only get to play Wham! Last Christmas three more times this year. We did get an endorsement from Gregory Angelo, the executive director of the Log Cabin Republicans. And we're going to drag the guy in here who actually programs the Holly Channel. All right, Wayne's at 695 Patriot 957 2874. So I have an NPR piece in front of me. Headline Ohio's Kasich signs gun law expanding concealed carry in daycares and colleges. Governor John Kasich signed Ohio's campus carry bill into law this week, making it legal to carry a concealed weapon at daycare facilities on college campuses. Kasich also signed a bill that bars cities and counties from setting their own minimum wage rates. Now, what's funny about, and you know that he's letting people carry guns in nursery schools for the most part. Was anybody frisking anyone walking into those places? If you're legal to carry, you're legal to carry. And private businesses can still still set whatever standard they want for carry on their private property. Joining us on the program right now is Tim Schmidt of the U.S. Concealed Carry Association. How you doing, sir? Hey, Andrew, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on the show today. I appreciate it. You know, what's funny is that when I was in college, I turned to, obviously turned 21 in college. I remember before my 21st birthday, I went and I was going to the school. I was going to University of Florida. I went to a gun store way outside of Gainesville called um, Picket Weaponry. And I knew I couldn't purchase the gun, but they were willing to put a gun of my choosing on layaway. And I actually picked it up, I think, the day after my my 21st birthday. And I lived in a fraternity house at the time. And I was I kept my firearm legally in my fraternity house, I couldn't carry it because I didn't have a concealed weapons permit. But how would it, how would the university have made that illegal if the state gave me uh, the right to keep and bear arms? Yeah, quite frankly, I, 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 it doesn't make any sense. And and ultimately, you know, if you if you want to live in a free country, that comes with responsibility. And uh, I, it, it, the, the the fact that that um, you know governments think they they can take away these natural born rights from us is, is no, but I'm talking about me. college campuses. This big fight over concealed campus concealed carry. Where yeah. would a state university, a private university, can set whatever rules it wants? It's private right. property. But how would a state university president trump state law with some kind of? campus ordinance where would they get the authority where would the president of the university of florida if the state of florida gave me a concealed weapons permit where would the university president get the authority under the state law to say you can't carry that gun on this university excuse me sir this university is paid for and is a state institution yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that they're probably, uh, as, as much as I disagree with this, they're probably getting it from the perspective that, that you know, typical concealed carry laws ban, you know, concealed carry guns from government buildings. That's the only thing that can make sense to me. Yeah, but that's, I mean, I guess, but I, I'm glad that, you know, look, I'm no fan of John Kasich. I think his you know, sort of folksy persona is that just a folksy persona, but I support him for doing this. Um, you know, the, the idea that people should lose their civil rights to either free speech, you know, lose their first amendment or second amendment rights just because they go to college is ridiculous. Yeah, I, I, I agree a hundred percent, Andrew. And, and I mean, to your point, you just said, I mean, a lot, a lot of students, especially of the conservative side are losing their first amendment rights as well when they go to these state universities, because they can't say the conservative perspectives that they believe in. And, 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 and so, it, so the second amendment follows and, and that. It, 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 it only makes sense in kind of a weird, twisted, uh, anti-freedom sort of way. You know, uh, it, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure you're going to see uh, blue state governors go in the opposite direction, right? I mean, it, it, I like I said, I didn't carry. I kept it, you know, and some people might say, well, do you really want, you know, people living in dorms and fraternity houses? You know, some people might be too irresponsible. Uh, to to keep and bear arms, and if they feel that they're at that point in their life where they're not responsible enough, they shouldn't do it. But the idea that the law should just declare uh, people legal but not legal at the same time—I mean, that's yeah. the law can't work that way. No, it, exactly. And and 
if you look at it from the perspective of it's impossible to legislate common sense, you, you simply can't do it. And, and I guarantee you that right now in these colleges and universities, there are people that have guns and they, you know, quote unquote, shouldn't have them. And so you can, you can create these gun free zones and create these laws that say that, oh, you can't have a gun here. But at the end of the day, the, when the evil person shows up there, they will always have a firearm. So, so laws like this that are essentially, you know, grant, you know, allowing people to exercise their, their natural born right to, to self-defense, all that's doing is allowing the good guys who are going to be the responsible ones to have a fighting chance when, the, when evil shows its head. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's some people in Germany that might be wanting to rethink some of these crazy European gun laws. <laughs> no kidding. Amen to that. You know, the, the other side of this is when you look at places where, let's say, a shopping mall or a, a coffee house or whatever it is, you know, it's funny that we say that, well, on private property, uh, you know, the, the proprietor could pretty much do whatever they want so long as we're just talking about banning guns. Anything else, and the Democrats will say, well, we got to take away a license or file a discrimination suit or whatever it is. Yeah. Who is, if I walk into a coffee house where the sign says no guns allowed, am I supposed to expect that one of the baristas is going to hop out from behind the counter and frisk me? You know, I mean, look, if if Disney wants to say no guns in the park, well, they're going to have to have a security apparatus, you know, second to none to make that happen, given how many people are coming through the parks every day. Yeah, that's, that's such a great point. And, and a little curious point here. So I live in the state of Wisconsin, Andrew, and and when we passed our concealed carry law, we snuck this provision in. And when I say snuck, we snuck it's because certainly the liberals never would have gone for this if they understood it. But in Wisconsin, if a private business prohibits guns, they're liable for anything that happens to a person in terms of some attack or, or anything because they weren't able to defend themselves. So I think is, I mean, it's, it's, it's perfect. Well, that and, you know, I mean, you, you I, I've read stories in, in out of the state of Washington, where you have police officers that won't go into certain, you know, uh, cafes and restaurants because the proprietors put up a sign that says no guns allowed. Well, good for you. You just told anyone looking to rob the place. They'll never be a police officer in there. Yeah. Yeah. They'll never be a police officer there. They'll never be a responsibly armed citizen. The old, the, those signs guarantee that the only people that have guns are going to be the sickos looking to, to make a name for themselves and kill innocent people. Tim Schmidt, U.S. Concealed Carry Association, is joining us, uh, usconcealedcarry.net. Uh, um, you know, this is the funny thing about the gun-free zone, and I, I don't mean to make light of it because we've seen, we have seen tragedy. We've seen tragedy in San Bernardino. We saw tragedy in Knoxville. We saw tragedy in Aurora, Colorado. Um, I, you know, what's amazing about the belief in the gun-free zone, and if I just put a sign in the window or we just pass another law, you know, homicidal maniacs don't think about the law whether it's adam lanza or or any of these guys that if you're a shopping mall or your school or whatever it is you put up a sign this is what i try to explain to people that hate guns i'm not your problem you see i go in new jersey let me tell you how it works in new jersey this is to other people other parts of the country they don't believe me when i tell them first when you live in new jersey you've got to go down to your local police department and you've got to fill out the application. So it's not, you know, standard name and address, phone number. You know, are you crazy? Are you going to overthrow the government? All that stuff. Are you an alcoholic? Then you have to pay and submit to a state uh, SBI, state um, mental health background check. You have to provide two character witnesses. Now, I've never heard of, uh, you know, any right that you had to exercise only if you could find two other people that think you're qualified to exercise that right. But, you know, you put down two people of of good reputation. And I usually use police officer friends of mine. And then you wait and the chief of police will usually have someone call you and say, OK, you can pick up your, your firearms permit card and then you got to get fingerprinted. Now, depending on the department, my department was fine with it. They brought me back. They fingerprinted me in the booking room, didn't charge me for it and handed me my, my permit and sent me on my way. The problem is every single time I want to buy a handgun. I have to go back and do that every single time. Okay? So given given the level of paperwork and process, I'm not your problem. The person that declares themselves to the state or the county for a concealed weapons permit is not your prop the problem. The person going into the gun store and saying, I'd like to buy that 
AR-15 and buys it legally is not the problem. I can't think of I can think of very few shootings where the person was 100 percent within the law until such time as they actually killed someone. What, what I'm getting at is this idea that if we just pass a law and put up a sign that some homicidal maniac's going to get to the mall and go gun free zone. God damn it. I was going to kill a bunch of people, but I guess I'll go home. <laughs> <laughs> oh my I, don't, I don't mean to make light of it. That's what I'm saying. I don't mean yeah. to make light of it, but college campuses have to learn that putting up the sign, you know, you and I will stay off the grass. The homicidal maniac won't. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right, Andrew. And, and this, my favorite thing is to point to the stories of the responsibly armed citizen that actually saved the day. Unfortunately, we don't hear about those in the mainstream media. For example, just a few months ago, September 17th, Crazed man with a machete attacks um, a little tiny little mall up in St. Cloud, Minnesota. This guy goes on a rampage. He's chasing people down in the mall with a machete. I mean, you can chop a guy's arm off with that thing. And so what happens? Concealed carry permit holder who's actually breaking the law at the time because he wasn't supposed to have a gun in there. Shoots the guy dead, saves the day. I mean, that is, that, that's the perfect story, but we never even hear that in the mainstream media. I mean, this stuff does happen, and thank goodness for that, man. Real quick, and uh, in full disclosure, USCCA it currently is not an advertiser on this program, so I just want to make that clear. Uh, why don't we talk about what you guys do? Because I have explained this to people that, you know, I live in New York, and I, and I, live, I work in New York, and I live in New Jersey. And look, people in the media here, not that I'm the media, but the city is for as bad as it is about gun permits you know a large number of people in the media can get a firearm if they really want one the reason why i don't have one right now carrying in the city is because and i said to a police officer friend of mine i said look you know damn well that i could be getting the crap kicked out of me by 10 anarchists in times square in full view of the public and on security camera and if i draw a weapon to defend myself there's still some prosecutor Who's going to want to, you know, ruin my life? It's it's better. It's better in that case to run. You guys yeah. actually are one of the organizations that help people that find themselves in these unfortunate because I don't believe for a second that you could pull the trigger in to save your own life and have it not change your own life. If that moment in your life comes, your life is going to change. And, and even if you save yourself. There is still a, a red tape legal system where P crusaders are going to come after you. Why don't you talk about what USCCA does? Sure, Andrew. Uh, it, it, I mean, you did a great job. Ultimately, we're all about we provide education, we provide training, and then the big thing is we, we, we provide self-defense insurance for responsible gun, American gun owners. And so, so what we do is, you know, if, if you're that, you know, husband or, or wife, you're that mom or dad that's, that's sitting in your home, or maybe you're out in a parking lot and you're with your family and you've got your legally, you know, concealed weapon and all of a sudden some thugs attack you and you do the same, you do the same thing that you and I would both do that any responsible, you know, God fearing uh, parent would do. You pull the trigger to protect your kids and, and your own honor and, and, and safety. So when you're a member of our association, the USCTA, we, we literally have 470 pro second amendment criminal and civil attorneys on our team. We have a critical response team. We have an actual self-defense uh, firearm liability insurance. We swoop in, we make sure you've got the best attorneys, you've got the best expert witnesses, everything you need to defend those legitimate self-defense acts. And the cool thing is that it works right now. We've been doing this for since 2003 and we're the guys that are making sure that good, honest, hardworking, responsible, gun owners don't do time or lose everything for doing you know for defending their family all right i gotta leave it there it's u.s concealed carry.net the uscca united states concealed carry association uh tim schmidt thanks so much for joining us thank you andrew great to be on the show all right one six six ninety five patriot nine five seven two eight 